What's going on guys? Quick video here because I'm, I bang on a lot about carbohydrates, about eating enough food, about portion size, about all this stuff in all these reaction videos that I'm doing. Some of you are probably like, geez, he's a dog with a bone. What's he banging on about this stuff for? And I just want to show you this study here that came out a couple, maybe a week ago or something um, by Trent Stellingworth. He's a, a guy I respect. I agree with a lot of the stuff he says. Actually, interesting, Stephen Seiler is a co-author author on this, which is cool. And Louise Burke, who... I question some of the stuff that she does, but you know, pretty well-respected authors. And it's overtraining syndrome and relative energy deficiency in sport, REDS, shared pathway symptoms and complexities. And when people, uh, when I'm doing these reaction videos and I'm banging on about all this stuff, about carbohydrate and stuff, this is what I'm thinking about. This is what I'm looking at. This is the downside of all the, the potential downsides of all that stuff and why I'm so big on it. So um, let's have a quick read through. I don't have the full text because... Um, you can access full text for free using Sci-Hub, this website, but it's a bit dodgy at the moment. It doesn't always work, and it doesn't really work for new uh, studies because it takes a while for them to get on there. I'm not in uni anymore, so I don't have access to get the full text for free, and I can't be bothered buying it, but there's a plenty in this abstract that we can go off. Um, so let me read through this very quickly. I'll try and summarize it as quick as possible. The symptom similarities between training overload and relative energy deficiency in sport. Let me summarize. So relative energy deficiency in sport, this reds, just, just say not eating enough. So not eating enough food, not eating enough carbohydrate. They've termed it this reds thing, which basically means it's just a whole, it's a series of symptoms that come along when you have a low energy availability, you're not eating enough calories, not eating enough carbohydrates. There's a whole symptom of uh, health impacts that come along with that and they've been termed this REDS thing. So REDS, not eating enough. So the, sim the symptom similarities between training too much and not having enough energy availability are significant with both, both initiating from a hypothalamic pituitary origin, so relating to, relating to hormones, um, so affecting hormones, and they can be influenced by low carbohydrate and energy availability. Yep. So in this review, they wanted to showcase that many of the negative outcomes of doing too much training may be prim primarily due to misdiagnosed underfueling via low energy av availability or low carbohydrate availability. So what they what they were going into this study and this review to look at was: is there a chance that people that think they're overtraining and have symptoms of overtraining? And maybe just not eating enough food, not eating enough carbohydrates, and it's as simple as that. So uh, I'll skip through this bit here, but let's just get to the to the um, to the meat of the stuff at the bottom here. So we demonstrate significantly similar symptom overlaps across much of the overtraining and not eating enough literature. So the symptoms of overtraining and the symptoms of not eating enough are similar. So it can be quite hard to distinguish between the two. They also said. It's important to note that prevention of under-recovery is multifactorial, but many aspects are based around energy availability and carbohydrate availability, meaning that there are different ways that you can under-recover, but pretty much the main way that you're going to under-recover from your training is by not eating enough and by not having enough carbohydrates. Herein, we demonstrated that attention is required to increase the knowledge and awareness of not eating enough and to enhance the diagnostic accuracy of both overtraining and not eating enough to allow clinicians to more accurate, accurately exclude not eating, eating enough from overtraining diagnosis. So what they're saying there is there's a lot of people that are getting diagnosed with overtraining syndrome, with doing too much training, but actually they're probably just not eating enough and, that, and a lot of the symptoms probably point towards just not eating enough carbohydrates, not eating enough energy overall. So they're saying there would be good to have um, more accurate ways of distinguishing between people that are doing too much training or people that are just not eating enough. So that's what I mean. I mean, when I, I guess when I get frustrated when I watch these videos and there's people starving themselves through half the day or not eating enough carbs and, and they're athletes, they're, they're riding four, five, six times a week, even more. They're doing a lot of training and it takes a lot of food and this is the downside, this is the stuff and they... And that's why people come to me and they say, oh, I'm overtraining, I'm not, uh, I can't recover, I, th I, think I'm, I think I'm overtraining, I can't, my training's not right, blah, blah, blah. A lot of the time, it's just the diet and the fueling and that side of things. So I'll leave that there. I'll leave a link to the study down below if you want to have a read through. But just if, if you keep hearing me bang on about, it, about the carbs and stuff, this is why. It's this sort of stuff 
That's easy wins, eating enough food, eating enough carbohydrate isn't that hard, and it's an easy win that means you can rule out a whole heap of overtraining symptoms if you just fuel your training properly. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.